Hey, this is Jay Starling for the Photonsters YouTube channel. We've had a lot of questions about how exactly do we do this wonderful thing called the XP resin test. So uh, we've written out a few times, but I don't know if there's a video on it. So I decided today that I would do a video on it. So the first step that you have to do is you have to go to the Photonsters GitHub. And you can find that at https github.com forward slash photonsters. So let's click on the Anycubic Photon docs. Maybe that'll find it. No. Okay, let's roll down. No issues. Photon slicers. The Any. Aha. Community projects. Exposure range tester. Quick method to test multiple resin exposures. Testing on the go by X3M Snake. All right, now here we have the editor template, resin finder, license, and the readme file. Okay, coming down to the photon resin calibration, we're going to look down here. Uh, there is a context video under it and a little bit of under the hood. Uh, nothing like what uh, we're doing here is walking you through everything. So let's talk about the what this is actually looking for. You have the negative space here, which it should be empty as it goes down through them. And then the positive space, which we should actually see the guy sticking out okay and as they get smaller and smaller uh, you can see in the resolution maximum resolution downs around in this range okay so and it'll give you a column number so you'll be able to see with that column number how well it's actually delivering and how good of quality you're going to get out of each one of those if these are just blurred off then you're not going to get any negative space and if these are all chunked into one big chunk you're not really going to get any positive space either it's just going to be missing so that's the idea behind each one of these little chunks that you're going to be getting out of it. Now we go down a little farther, you'll see the exposure range in seconds, the base layer exposure. So in this test module, it'd say the layer file uh, is 25 microns. And then it'd be base layer exposure is 100 seconds. And then the exposure range is going to go from 2 to 20. So you're going to have 10 lines. Each one will be 2 seconds. So this tells you that that's the multiplier. Okay. All right, and then there's some other exposure tests that we do afterwards. You can see like underexposing, normal exposing, overexposing on this as well. And this shows the range finder, which is great. This is really saying eight is the really good one, as you can tell through here, versus nine starts getting a little worse. Ten, you start getting overexposure. Eight's really the guy we'd want. So somewhere between eight and nine. Um, would be the range that we'd want there. And that was for the Amerilabs AM3 lead K that he did. And then they did the Amerilabs test again, and you can see in black where that one came out from his different testing. Okay? All right. So, great. You told me all this. Now, what do I do with it? This is where people normally have a problem. They hit the download clone or download. I'm going to hit that button, and you're just going to go ahead and tell that one and hit download zip. Now for me, this is going to put it in my download directory. What I'm going to do temporarily is just grab this and drag it out here. Okay, we are going to go ahead and open that up. Extract all, and of course it's jumping off my desktop. I'm just going to extract it off to my desktop. I'm going to open that up. You can see the Photon Resin Calibration Master. In here you will find the XP resin XP finder. There is slow resin tests and regular LCD tests. Okay. There's also 25 micron, 50 micron, 100 micron tests. Now there's also an instructions file. So this is great to read. Obviously if you just open up with notepad this is what you're going to get. We don't want that. We're going to right click that. I have notepad. We're going to go ahead and open a notepad. Okay, let's take a look. Set up. Make sure your machine is leveled before running the test. Make sure you've leveled the machine. If you don't know how to level the machine, there will be a link in the description discussing how to use both Flint Reads method and the paper method. Paper method came directly from the manufacturer. Again, you just, if you're pulling on it, it's okay. When you go to push, it should start to crinkle the paper. But if you pull, it should come out. If it doesn't want to come out when you're pulling, towards you then that's too tight of the on the screen you need to back it off a little bit enabling the test mode you noticed let's go this way let's kind of 
shrink this guy over and down and over. Perfect. When we do the enabling the machine test mode, run test mode.gcode, one of the files in the resin XP finder folder. There's this test mode G code. So the very first thing we need to do past all the setup is yeah, download and unzip the resin XP resin finder folder to a USB stick. So we need to grab all these guys and move them to a USB. I have a beautiful USB PNY. I am going to take everybody that we have on here. Copy him on. Let's just walk through what we have in here. LCD test. Here's a way to look for light diffusion and a pattern test on the LCD screens. We also have the slow resin tests if you have to do a really big test. If, if maybe you're working with uh, blue cast, uh, trying to cast resins, or maybe you have a resin, uh, some of the flexible resins would use these. You might have a resin that was originally meant for a laser, not for the LCD screens, and they're going to take a lot longer to expose it to that level. Some of those won't even work, period, but this will let you at least test them and see whether you'd be able to use them. You probably, from a reality standpoint, wouldn't want to use them uh, in production because of how long it would take, but you never know. You might have one special project that you're doing something for and you're willing to do it. So this would allow you to test those slower-running resins. Um, validation print. Again, there's a little validation print to run. And then we have the print mode, the test mode, and the three different resins at the, uh, the 100 base, and then the 2 by 20, the 25 micron, 50, and 100 micron. So now that I have them on the USB drive, we're looking good there. Let's make sure we eject that USB drive. Next, we're going to be going over to our photon. All right, we've plugged the USB drive in, and we're going to hit the print button. Now you see the test mode.g code right here. That will activate the testing mode that we need to be able to print this. And we'll hit the print button, and it'll finish. Beep, beep. I've had the sound turned off on mine. Press the print button again. We are going to hit the down arrow. One more time, you can see the first resin test here at the 25U, 25 micron. Now we have the 50 and the 100 here. I'm going to go ahead and press the 50. Then we're going to go ahead and hit the play button. Now the exciting part happens. It'll take 100 seconds and actually weld that first plate right on there for us. Now the test code.g code, what it did was disable the peeling function that we have available. So that way, uh, we're not going to see peel in between these slices that we're going to be doing. And we're going to turn that back on when we're done. But right now, we're going to fast forward a little bit. Okay, we are 100% of the way done with the print. We're going to press yes on there. Notice I already have my gloves on. Now we're going to go back up. And then you are going to find one that says print mode, print-mode.gcode. Press that and hit play. Once it says that, you hit yes. You are back to where you should be to be able to do your production. Okay. So what does it look like? All right, here we can see some samples. And in the samples, you can see the six, seven, eight marks. Also on the left-hand side, uh, I've kind of offset the printer, and it's a little unlevel. Remember how I said I wanted it level at the beginning? You can tell it's not level because the numbers aren't down there. But for this print, really, if you look at eight, eight is about best where I'm at. Nine starts to get a little overexposure, so you can see the numbers easily on six, seven, and eight. Eight would be where I would be printing this guy. Uh, maybe seven, maybe eight, somewhere in between there is the best exposure that we're probably going to get with this. Um, again, from the not being level, what I really should do now is go back, level my bed, and rerun this. But if I was just really in a hurry and I didn't want to level bed, 
I would have just went with seven or eight. Hope this video helps you. If there's anything else we can uh, help you with, just put a message in the comments. Thanks. Bye-bye.